The boy or girl paradox. It's something that has frequently stimulated a great deal of controversy. Many people argue strongly for both sides with a great deal of confidence, sometimes showing disdain for those who took the opposing view. Oh wow, is that true? After reading all your comments and having a lot of back and forth with some of you, and thinking way too much about coin flips and very specific types of parents in a room, I think I finally have an explanation as to why this all works. And thank you by the way to everyone who was commenting what I now believe is the correct explanation. Now, just like the Monty Hall problem, math isn't broken here, you guys. It's just sometimes in these situations, the details can be so subtle that we don't even notice, or at least I didn't. So with the assumptions I made in the last video, such as no twins, or the fact that no parents got named both their daughters the same thing, the math that I showed is 100% correct, I believe, if, and this is a big if, if I had phrased it more like this. If we have a room full of randomly selected parents who have two children, then ask those with at least one daughter to step forward, what is the probability a randomly selected parent has two daughters? This answer is 33.3% as stated in the video before, as there are more mixed families out there than girl-girl families, so I don't need to show the math again. If you then ask all those people who have a daughter named Julie to step forward, then 50% of those families will have two daughters, also as stated in the other video, because any family with two girls has twice the potential to have a Julie. And lastly, if instead of the name we ask those with a daughter who was born on a Tuesday to step forward, then 13 out of 27 of those will have two daughters. Another way to get the same results is ask a random parent, like at a bar, who has two kids, if at least one child is a girl. If they say yes, what is the probability they have two daughters? In this case, the probability still does not change from one out of three. And if you ask if they have a daughter named Julie, you won't get a yes very often, but if you do, the new probability is still 50%. Notice something extremely crucial here. With all these scenarios, whether we ask them to step forward or just ask them the questions at a bar, they have to tell us if they fit the criteria, ideally. So whether they have a daughter or one named Julie, they are going to let us know or they're going to step forward or whatever. That right there is basically the theme of this entire video and is where the paradox of the previous video pretty much falls apart. Because in any stats class, when we're given something, we almost never ask how we're given that. But in this problem, it's really important. Telling everyone to step forward or just asking them about their child are one of the same and they yield those probabilities we just saw. But being randomly told in conversation some detail about their kid is a completely different story and hopefully this shows why. Imagine a room of 10,000 randomly selected fathers with two kids. First we're going to ask all those with two boys to leave and we're going to analyze the rest. Notice this does not reflect a random night out at a bar, but we're going to build up to that. So if you're talking to one, you have a 1 out of 3 chance of guessing they have two daughters. Nothing new here. But let's say you talk to every single father in that room, and at some point in the conversation, they all end up randomly mentioning the name of one of their daughters. Again, this does not reflect talking to someone out at the bar who may mention either of their kids, but for now we'll assume people cannot talk about their sons for whatever reason. If one out of 100 girls are named Julie, then here are all the 50 fathers whose only daughter is named Julie, and here are the 50 fathers whose kids are both girls, one of which is named Julie. We have an even split just like before because of having twice as many girls in the right category. Now everyone conveniently has mentioned the name of their daughter. That means all 50 boy-girl fathers with a daughter named Julie have told you about her since there's no one else for them to say. Then of the 50 two-daughter families with one named Julie, only half of them will tell you about her. The other half will tell you about their other daughter. That means there's a total of 25 green checks on the right and 50 on the left. So of all the 75 dads you've heard about Julie from, only 25 or a third will have two daughters, which is the same probability as before we heard the name, or 33.3%. It did not jump to 50%. So once they say the name, it changes nothing. See here's the thing, in the last video I said once you hear they have a daughter named Julie, you know they are in one of these two categories. Since both have the same number of dads, the odds are 50-50. The subtle little problem with that is when the name comes up by chance, you're going to hear about Julie from the left category more often. If you're going to put money down after each time you hear Julie, you should bet that they have a son, because you'll win 50 times and lose only 25 due to that 33.3% probability. 
Let's compare this to asking people if they have a daughter named Julie though. If we ask this person specifically if they have a kid named Julie, they say yes. We then move on to this person and they say yes. Same with this dad and the rest of these 50 since we said these are all the two daughter fathers with one named Julie. See, in this case, no one gets by. If they have a girl named Julie, they tell you every time. Then if we ask this dad, they of course say yes and same for all the rest. So of the 100 times we hear about Julie now, 50 or half of those have two daughters, which is how we would get this new probability. When the name comes up by chance, all that changes is we never hear about Julie from half the dads on the right, which takes away 25 from the girl-girl parents and also the total, which means we keep the 33.3% from before. Now we can see if we're talking to a random parent who we know has at least one daughter out of two kids, the odds they have two daughters is 33.3% even if they happen to tell us the name. But in order for this to be a better reflection of reality, we need to ask how we were given that this person has at least one daughter. Did they just happen to randomly tell us in conversation or did we ask? Because if we asked, then we're gonna get those same probabilities we saw in the last video since if they have a daughter, they're going to tell us. But if they just randomly told us during conversation, then we need to go back to that room with 10,000 randomly selected dads. So we just heard this person has a daughter. That means they are one of these 5,000 dads with one daughter, or one of these 2,500 dads with two. But if all these dads are in a room and just mention a child of theirs, that means only half the ones on the left will mention a daughter. The other half will talk about their son. Whereas everyone on the right will of course mention a daughter. That means there are 2,500 checks on the left and 2,500 on the right. Now of all the parents we just heard about a daughter from, half of them have two daughters. We've jumped to the 50% probability and the 33.3% is completely gone. So now we're at the bar talking to someone who has two kids and just by chance they mention they have a daughter. At this moment, our odds are actually 50% that they have two daughters because if we kept doing this over and over with different people, some of those with a daughter are not gonna tell us, which evens out the numbers and leaves that 50% probability, even though the categories themselves are not a 50% split. But now that person says, whose name is Julie? Again, the question is, does this change things? Well, on the left here, I'm gonna take away those who don't tell us that they have a daughter, which we said leaves a total of 2,500 dads. Now, if one in 100 girls are named Julie, that means 25 of those dads will have a daughter named Julie. If you talk to all of them, you're gonna hear the name Julie every single time since, again, that's their only daughter. In this right category, it's actually 50 families that will have a daughter named Julie since there's twice as many girls here compared to the left. But only half of them will say Julie, while the other half will say the other daughter's name, leaving us with 25 checks on the right. So when you're at the bar talking to this parent, he is simply one of those check marks. You don't know which one, but you can get a probability. Because if we kept doing this over and over, of everyone who would get to this point of saying a daughter named Julie, just by chance, 50% of them have two daughters, leaving us with that same probability from before. The name changed nothing, and the quote unquote paradox falls apart. It was in fact all about the subtle wording this entire time. So let's put this all together. If you go out tonight and you're talking to someone who just happens to mention they have two children, then they also mention that one of them is a girl, do not make any bets just yet because there's a 50% chance that person has two daughters and a 50% chance they have a daughter and a son. On the other hand, if you wanna make some money tonight and look very weird to people, then go out and ask everyone if they have two children and then ask if one of them is a girl. If they say yes, then take out some money and say, I will bet you I know the gender of both of your children. And then you say boy and girl every time and you will win 66.6% .6 of the time. In fact, you can even incentivize people to play by saying something like, if I don't guess right and you win this, I will give you $10. But if I do guess right, you only have to give me $8. Because the average person is going to think they have a 50-50 shot of winning this. So if you adjust the payment amounts by just a little bit, they're gonna think, okay, well now it's actually in my favor. When in reality, as long as you don't adjust it too much, you're gonna come out net positive, especially if you do this many times throughout the night. So to conclude, if you are talking to someone and they just happen to mention they have a daughter, 50% chance they have two daughters. 
if they then just happen to mention the name, 50% chance they have two daughters still. If on the other hand, you ask if they have a daughter, you have a 33.3% chance they have two daughters. If you then happen to guess the name right, you now have a 50% chance that they have two daughters. If you mix two of these situations, like you first ask if they have a daughter, you have those 33.3% odds. If then they just happen to mention the name Julie, it stays the same. When they happen to mention something, the probability typically stays the same. But when you ask, that's what changes things. So hopefully this cleared things up from the last video. I'm sure I'm gonna get some debate in the comments on this one as well. But you should be able to see that there isn't actually a paradox here. They're just minor details that when phrased properly, you can make it seem like a paradox when it's actually not. So with that, I'm going to end that video there. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and join the Major Prep Facebook group for everything. Hit the bell if you're not being notified, and I will see you guys in the next video.